Welcome to a very special, very special episode of At The Bar Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Mike, and joining me, and only me, Jeff, a.k.a. Hollywood. I That's me. Up. Hey. Hey, Jeff. It's all right. I'll be Jeff Whatever. and Hollywood today. And Hollywood. So we were here recording live at our favorite brewery, Red Cypress. Mm-hmm. Our first ever episode from Red Cypress, at Red Cypress, I should say. Yeah. We haven't done this before. Not here. So we were here at Red Cypress. <laughs> it is July 6th at the time of this recording. Got that right. It's Wednesday. So we're going to go into, we have, we have a lot of catching up we have to do. Yeah. We've had a very busy month, especially the last two weeks. A whole lot. A whole lot of episodes that have come out that are actually post-dated at this point, and now yeah. we're trying to just do a recap on everything yeah. while it's fresh. Right. So by the For time us. <laughs> yeah. So by the time you guys are listening to this episode right now, being recorded on July 6th, I have a phone call, but I'm not going to take it. Um, all four episodes from our South Florida SoFlo Summer Brewery Tour 2016 whoop, whoop, are out on all platforms, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, such and such, Google Play, the, the whole thing. Funky's been out for Funky's a little bit. It's already killing bit. it. Yeah, doing good. Killing it. Uh, you know, Bang a Banjo, Lauder Ale, and Do South, they're all out. Watch them, listen to them. We're getting great things. Probably are some of our best episodes, I think. I agree, yeah. I had a lot I mean, of fun. That, that weekend was a, lot, a little bit too much fun <laughs> that doing it. That was crazy. You like, guys will hear some of these episodes. You'll be like, was Jeff really <laughs> hammered when he was doing that one? And the answer is was, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> There's little puns throughout each episode of us, us making fun of how Jeff went really hard. Especially at Funky Buddha and Lauderdale, because that was well, our first day there. I got, I was really more drunk at Lauderdale due to the <laughs> fact that we were at Funky Buddha earlier that day. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to thank everyone, everyone at Funky Buddha, Lauderdale, Do South, and Bang and Banjo for being fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean every place we went to, not only was our guests nice, but the staff was nice. You know, mm-hmm. a couple of the owners showed up, or were actually guests. You know, with Adam. But um, everyone was just super chill. Man, super how cool nice was it at Lauderdale when the owner came, just like in board shorts and sandals, like yeah. hanging out, just like young, charismatic, fun dude. We're like, man, this is so cool. Yeah, he just walks in the room. We're like, hey, man, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> he ends up being the owner, one of the owners. It was crazy. I mean, Funky Buddha was legit. I mean, Funky Buddha's Funky Buddha, man. I mean, I, I'll, it stands I by will itself. go on record right now and say that I, uh, after that trip, hands down, my the number one brewery in Florida, in Florida by yep. far. There's nobody who's even close to putting out what they're putting out right. anymore. I mean, Cigar City, you have the consistency, but Funky Buddha has the wow factor of every single beer being incredible. Right. And then we went to Lauderdale. I mean, we spent a couple hours at every brewery, but we spent the most time at Lauderdale, which is surprising. Yeah, because we didn't really know much about it we before we got We didn't know anything there. about Lauderdale. And, and they were, you know, we just went there because they won a bunch of awards and wanted to talk and you know, we went there, we got the tour and whatever, and then, but we stayed a long time that, after the episode. Them and Bang and, and they Banjo partied. Them and Bang and Banjo were both like our the two smallest places that we went to too. Right. So for us to spend the most time at like a brewery that's the size, the whole brewery was the size of Funky Buddha's Tap Room. Yeah, and and it was on air conditioned, yeah. <laughs> and it was like ninety five degrees, and we were like, dude, this place is awesome. We're gonna yeah. hang out here. We, we spent st- the most time. We at stayed Lauderdale. there for like four or five four yeah. hours. And let me tell you what, Lauderdale <laughs> knows how to party. Yeah, they do. I mean, between John, the head brewer, just like going outside eating the tacos and just, <laughs> hey guys, come on, man. And it was a great time. The band Everyone was like when the band was up in the loft and yeah. stuff. They, were, I mean, Super they were cool. loud. They were loud. It was real cool. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great. I mean, Bang and Banjo was was awesome. We met Dave from Florida Beer Block mm-hmm. there. Good friend of the show. He listens. What's up, Dave? Um, <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> hey, dude. We did some beer exchanges. We brought some Red Cypress down to him. He's loved it. He wrote a beer blog about it. So, And then they had their chocolate vanilla banana stout. Fantastic. Yeah. And I then, think it was a chocolate banana milkshake. Milkshake, correct. Yeah. Hung out there. Real cool. It's a shame he's a Gator fan, but we'll allow Adam it. from Bang & Banjo, you're, you're forgiven. Yeah, we'll allow it because we'll you, you, you make good beer. Yeah. And then Due South was a beautiful disaster as 311 says God. and i loved it you know that episode i think i uh, i think i enjoyed funky buddha like way too much i think i enjoyed do south the perfect amount like i like <laughs> like i was definitely getting hammered at do yeah. south um brian obviously freaking brian I mean, yeah, it's brian, it's brian. <laughs> brian brian t so awesome um 
But yeah, that was a that was a really good time. Yeah. Uh, we ended up closing down that bar. Yeah. They were closed when we were leaving. Yeah. The bartenders are like twerking behind the bar and dancing, and we're like, <laughs> yeah. "See ya." See ya. They're all See cleaning. Guys. They're cleaning and just blasting music, and we're like walking out with our equipment. Yeah. I mean, due <laughs> south. I mean, we we were you know we we spent Saturday in, in Fort Lauderdale, and then we went to Bang and Banjo in the morning, Sunday morning, and then due south Sunday afternoon on our way back up to Orlando. And for me, due south was a struggle because I really wanted to drink like a lot. And you had to drive. And I had to drive. So I had to not only pace myself, but not only pace the show and lead the show, but also pace myself because I wanted everything. Yeah. All of it in my mouth. Also, for those fans who haven't listened to all of the shows yet, we actually hit time on all of them. <laughs> Believe it or not. We're below time. <laughs> we actually made it to an hour, pretty much exactly an hour on all of them. So we actually we're getting better at tuning in yeah, this show. Funky Buddha was under an hour. Yeah, we're Can getting that? we're getting better at tuning the time in on this yeah. show. We're not so, going to have those hour and 45 minute episodes anymore. Or two hour ones of disaster not knowing which beer is which and oh god that was like a, that was like, your birthday though yeah that's true it's excusable it's, okay. it's excusable but yeah it was it was awesome uh hope you guys check them all out they're awesome there are some secrets there i know john from funky buddha dropped a couple secrets i know brian from do south dropped a couple secrets so if you guys want to know what these guys are up to those episodes are a must listen mm-hmm. we'll give you i'll give i'll drop one from funky buddha they're canning yeah big news mm-hmm. big news or do south or do south expansion expansion big tap room air conditioned tap room yep they're ready to roll and the funky boot is doing a lot of cool changes as well with and more how i'm not going to tell you all of them how they're releasing their beer but we'll leave it at that and thanks again for the french toast sean <laughs> i got so excited so that was um july 18th and 19th i'm sorry june 18th and 19th we're in july now the very next saturday from spending an entire weekend in fort lauderdale was the first annual World of Beer UCF Homebrew Fest. So yeah, right into the another thing that Jeff kept bitching about big having the, weekend. Having the, I'm tired of talking about it. We talk I'll about it all you, the time. I'll tell you, <laughs> that was the most work I've done for an end of, for anything for one single day. That's the most work I've ever put in for anything. But I'm so glad it paid off, and it really was did. such an awesome event. So much fun, and we're here at Red Cypress, who was the you know the big, the big brewery sponsor, part yeah. uh, partner with us for that, and. Uh, I mean, it, it went off very well. It was such a good event. It was 97 degrees, so it was really hot. It was 97. It felt like 120. But it was uh, it was a great time. Really yeah. good event. The brewers had a good time. I've gotten so much positive feedback yeah, from customers, yeah. from brewers. Uh, thank you. Thank you, emails. Um, just people coming into the store who I haven't seen before who are like, oh, I was at your homebrew festival and sure. had such a good time. So um, there are rumblings of that happening again in the future. Um not in not only in summer they're talking about doing two a year and doing a winter and a summer and for those people who are like man i can't believe they're going to keep doing the summer they're talking about pushing it back later in the day eight later so it, instead of it ending at six it's going to start at six and go till nine yeah. so that way you're getting into the evening hours and they're also talking about getting a misting fan so big or two like big box fans cool we, it down we in in terms of putting the the, the event together we I don't think we had any issues of it having hiccups or anything. So there's no, no, there's no real problems. Not at all. In terms of ran really smooth. It, it um, ran smooth. Um, we did run a little low on ice, but I was up. If that's the only problem, I'll take it. I was up real late, worrying about every single possible problem. And um, the thing about the ice, it, it sucks, is because I told all the brewers exactly how much we were bringing, and I actually brought an extra call it a hundred, hundred pounds of ice too. Um, and I told them all, I was going to give them 20 gallons or 20 pounds a piece. And somehow some people got more than 20 pounds and it left other people without, which yeah. is a little, you know, frustrating, but it's, it happens. And that's just yeah. part of running the event. And, uh, um, but we, we made do. Nobody yeah, ran out no of ice. We out. ended up Beers using. Cold. Yep, we ended up using our uh, our ice machine ice and just ran it down, and yeah. it kept refilling throughout the day, and we, we made it work. So, yeah. uh, so it that did, was the only hiccup. It yeah. sold out plus it sold some. out plus plus some. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things. I've had people come up to me shaking my hand saying, "This is the best event Wobs put on in years." I had uh, that's a lot because John Deason, who's a friend of the show, who's been on the show before, who's yeah. been uh, regular since day one at that World of Beer, said that. It was the uh, the best event that they've done at that location ever. Yep. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. And there's more to come. 
Whether or not we'll be involved, yet to be determined. Me? I might we, be an advisor. We, we, as in you and I. Well, at the bar, better be involved. We'll see. Dude, we're involved. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that happened. That was July of, god damn, June 25th. It was awesome. Hot, but worth it. We worked our asses off. But, you know, everything came out. So I want to congratulate 74S for winning first place. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't remember. It was an IPA. I can't remember if it was a, it was a session. Uh, it was a session IPA. So they took first. Uh, they did, yeah. 74 is one with um, with the Session IPA. Second place was, was on, time, on brewing. time Brewing with the uh, Luau Stout. Congratulations. Uh, Derek and Alki, Alki. who Alki's been on the show before, is a uh, great guy. Yeah. Awesome with Bells. And um, he uh, he also has been brewing for quite some time with Derek. Right. And they took uh, they took second place with the Luau Stout. And then third place was actually uh, Chris Holland, who's with Central Florida Home Brewers, also works uh, – with Swamp Head as well, and and he did a white stout with white chocolate co- and coconut, coconut and white chocolate, or something it, like that. Yeah, it's ba- essentially a modified golden ale um, with coffee, so it right. makes it taste like a stout and has a stout body, but the color of a golden ale. And uh, it, I thought that beer was incredible. Yeah, both um, all of them were incredible. Obruskis, uh, Obruskis had the um, double IPA. They were like honorable mention. That thing was amazing. Yeah. We and had then um, Mosquito County with their margarita dirt, goza. Yep, dirty, uh, dirty bird with dirty the. Bird. Um, what did they have? They had, the, had, chai, had the, the chai, the chai, vanilla porter. coconut, vanilla, vanilla porter. With that a was, bunch of other ingredients. Oh my god! They were every. Uh, there were so many great beers. Puts up, nail the sour, a brown sour, I believe. And so did um, and so did uh, Deviant Wolf. Yep. They had yep. a great sour. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it was, not a single bad beer. No, not really. Not, not at a all. single bad beer. Every, every beer, you know, was, I mean, hit style to mm-hmm. say the least. So, you know, there was no surprises, no bad beers. There's no hiccups. Everyone had average, to, you know, stellar beers. I would say uh, untapped ratings. There was nobody less than a three, in my opinion. They all hit yep. style. Agreed. Yeah. And three out of five. And for a homebrew competition with 23 yeah. brewers, that's pretty good. Or when for, they all for, hit for us, it's a seven because we mm-hmm. go off a, a 10 right. with decimals. <laughs> Where I, I've just been kind <laughs> People of. People are still mad about I've been kind of changing to untapped scale now. Don't do it. We're just gonna stick to yeah. We're, we we got because Preston does untapped, and it gets kind of confusing, because like, or you give math two, and shit. You get two beers a, a three seven five when you like one more than the other, but neither are a four. Anyway, semantics. So, great time. Yeah. Good event. <laughs> Glad that we did it. Awesome. Um, and if you guys missed it, look for it in the future. World of Beer UCF's uh, Facebook page will be the first to put it out there. And yeah. uh, you'll definitely see it again in the future. Absolutely. It's, it's coming. It'll, it'll definitely happen again. It's definitely happening for sure. It'll probably even be bigger and a little bit, uh, we, you know, we're going to obviously learn from, we're going to learn from what we did well and, and what we didn't do well. So it'll be, uh, it'll be good again. It'll yeah. probably be bigger and it'll be a little bit different. I think um, we had discussed uh, some of the few, the few things I would have improved on the voting structure. Uh, I want to change sure. a little yep. bit. Uh, we don't know if we're going to do a community choice winner and a brewing panel type winner mm-hmm. or if we're going to um, have like a, a panel of experts that have a different uh, a different vote that's worth more or less. Um, sure. You know, we don't really know how we're going to do it. It's just it, I did have one brewer come up and I won't say who it was, but uh, Ryan Parker from from Red Cypress voted for their beer. And he walked away, and they were like, oh, my God, that's so freaking awesome. <laughs> the, the brewer that is going to brew the collaboration voted for us and wants to brew with us, basically. Yeah. And he's like, I can't believe that's only worth one vote. And I'm like, you Damn. know what? It, it, yeah. it is. Yeah. And you're like, wow, that's, you know, if there was a handful of people that had a vote that was worth a little bit more. Three vote then it, coins then or it, five vote coins Yeah, or then it hedges out some of the other, in, you know, inconsistencies in voting. So, yeah. Um, we don't know how it's going to be done in the future. It might be two things. Uh, they're definitely doing medals next time. Sure. I know that. That'd be awesome. I wish we could have done that, but we, we had a limited amount of time and right. a lot of things kind of happened all towards the end to mm-hmm. where we have but time to iron that out. They're going to do some medals. They're going to do, uh, otherwise the structure should be about the same. And, and mm-hmm. I don't think anybody really wants drastic changes cause it went so well. Um, but little changes to make, you know, either more involvement or, I don't know. Just uh, make yeah. it a little, just a little you, bit. The music better. was awesome. Gary Laser Eyes oh killed it. Oh my god, what a good band! That was, right? that was a good choice for the uh, the music. You know, we wanted to do something different. They, you know, they acoustic is everywhere. Rock is everywhere. 
Let's do something really different. They were like a great like jam, awesome. yeah, jam band, like that reggae-ish style, but yep. they were like a little louder than reggae and a little bit yep. more rocky, but uh, they were f- f- I mean, people awesome. were going in between the festival and watch and then perform. You know, they go in, get a beer from the festival, and then walk in and just sit and listen to them and back and forth, and mm-hmm. people would get food. We had food coming out super fast, and... It was, it yeah, was, man. It was perfect. Talking about uh, up, upping it to 30 brewers next time. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. That's a problem for future us. Yeah, future <laughs> us. So we're here at Red Cypress. This, this is a bittersweet episode. We Our first big episode, I believe it was episode six or seven, we had Ryan on. The first one. the real Our, our real first traction big, yeah. episode that we felt like we had made it something that we're proud of finally right. finally so episode six i, I want to say it's six but it could be seven we had ryan parker you know ceo of red cyphers where we're at now come on and we tried his beers and the whole discussion blah 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 and it was a super long episode but i <laughs> so long it was really long <laughs> but looking back on it like we've grown so much to not only shorten our episode lengths <laughs> but have essentially polished the show i want to say and, and more content and more less content time, and less time and still polished we've adapted to things that we thought were doing wrong or too long to now we're shorter more to the straight to the punch this and that so this episode i really wanted to do at red cypher just because having ryan on that sixth or seventh episode was our first big episode like i said so i kind of this episode is kind of turning everything full circle and jeff has some news to give to the the vast audience to our of at the bar to our bar to all of our drinking buddies or all, all of our drinking buddies listening. yeah so uh i actually am no longer working um for world of beer ucf i've taken on another position with a different company down in south florida near west palm area if you guys are familiar with that area i'm, I'm going to be taking over a restaurant in downtown stewart uh called the black marlin um which will be the new home to the show Correct. uh it is um, a big move, a great opportunity for me. I'm really excited about it. The show will continue. I'll still be on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it, it's going to be, uh, it's just going to be a little bit, not even different for you guys, probably. Different. You probably might not even notice an, uh, that we've changed, but um, it's it's going to be uh, still Orlando based for 50% of us are mm-hmm. still here. And then the other 50% will be down there and we'll be at bars still doing the show. Yeah. Um, so we'll still be at the bar. It'll just be, we're working out the details, but it'll be, it'll be good. More likely we're, we're going to be on Google Hangouts to some, you know, or Skype, whatever you want to, you know, video stream and call it. Um, so I think, I think it's a benefit for the show. I'm not sad Jeff is leaving because he's really not leaving. Um, we're ex- I, the way I see it, I think we're expanding. You know, we're not only, not only are we, we are now currently 100% in Orlando, but now you know, I'm in Orlando for the for the time being, and then you're moving down to essentially South Florida. So we're gonna, you know, we're expanding to the South Florida market. Um, bye, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs> you know, um, Black Marlin will be, I guess, what you can, I guess, the home of the show. You know, whatever that means. Yeah. Even though we're, I won't be down there all the time, but it, it it'll be that's home base. It'll be really good. Um, it's funny because we are we're a Central Florida based uh, craft beer podcast uh, or bar related podcast or whatever we want to call it. However, you know, we, we a lot of our content isn't Central Florida based anyway. We've talked about Tampa markets, we've talked about South Florida markets, we talked about Jacksonville, Jacksonville markets, national markets. We talked about national bear. You know, yes, we're, weddings. We're in here. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're in this market, and we get to the benefit of having great breweries like Red Cypress around us, and mm-hmm. then you know mediocre breweries like everybody else. And <laughs> now we have the benefit of being around the South Florida market as well, and we're going to get. Um, like we just did our South Florida beer tour is, yeah. is huge, right? Those yeah. episodes were so cool. Everybody's pumped about that. Yep. Um, that was, we got more following on our Facebook page and Twitter from, from us just doing that trip and the, yep. the episodes aren't even out yet. Yep. Um, now that market's available to us. So I'm excited about that. And we still have the central Florida market as well. Yep. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be good. We're going to have a lot of cooler beers readily available to us mm-hmm. a lot more in distribution down in South Florida. Um, we have friends down there and we'll be able to continue doing really good, really good shows. And it'll be kind of cool too, for us to be able to compare and contrast what we're seeing in the beer markets from just only two hours away. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're, 
me and Jeff, this is, I think the, this is the last episode probably for a while that me and him are actually sitting at the same table face to face, not kissing. That's weird. But later, yet, yet. <laughs> the mic shut off. But, you know, we're still, it's, the show still be the same. You might notice a little bit of a, of, I guess, a, a, not necessarily a quality, but like, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be internet based. So you might, I might drop out. Jeff might drop out. We have to, we might be disconnected, a, a, a delay, but essentially the show is still going to be the exact same. There's a, um, we're going to be in different locations. There is an opportunity too, and we don't know if this is going to happen down the road, but this is also cool for you guys. If we can work it out is, uh, because it's it's hangout based, there is an opportunity for us to have viewer interaction. Sure, where they can they can hop on the show. Um, also, it gives us the opportunity to remote interview brewers and things like that. From all over. The if country. we wanted to have, yeah. if Carlos is out in San Diego and he's at the he's at the Ballast Point, um, you know, brewery, yeah. he could hop on a computer with with a, a mic. mic and just jump on, and he's he's on the show, and, and we're interviewing somebody in San Diego. So there are a lot of benefits to it, um, one of which is that Mike doesn't have to bring all this equipment every time he goes and does anything it's anymore. It's for me, yeah. And, uh, but <laughs> I think the quality will still will still, be there. still I'm, be there. I'm making sure I'm getting a good quality product for me to record on sure. when I'm down there. And, and uh, you know, my I don't want my audio or anything to be messed up and giving you guys a janky-ass show. Yeah. We'll, we're going to focus on giving you the same quality, but it's going to be uh, it's Remote. just going to be a little bit different. A little, little, little different, yeah. If you notice it, you notice it. If not, you maybe you won't. If we never said anything, you probably wouldn't. But <laughs> I hope not. That's, that's the plan. But, you know, with when, uh, me and Jeff still have to work out some semantics in terms of what we're going to do because I think with him moving, I think opens up us to having more things available for – not only the show, but for listeners, we can live stream. So me and him could be recording a show. And if you guys hop on, you know, you guys can comment, you know, type comments or type us questions. And we would see that live and then, you know, we would answer them on the show. And, and so it's a lot more uh, interaction, a lot more feedback. Um, like Jeff said, we have people on remotely from other locations. Um, so it's, it's going to, whether it's I have to go to a brewery and have the brewer on. And, then, you know, me and, the, me and the guests are talking to Jeff, who's in Jupiter, or vice versa. Jeff is going down to Funky Buddha and hanging out with John. And Jeff and John are on the same computer, and then I'm the one in Orlando. So it's, I think it's awesome. I think it's not a bad thing at all. I think we're expanding. I think the show is going to get a lot better. Um, and then, obviously, Black Marlin will be our home. Yeah. So you can go bother Jeff. Come down to Stewart. It's the yeah. happiest seaside town in the country, if you don't remember from 10 <laughs> episodes ago when I told you that. Right. Happiest seaside town in the country. That's so we'll, where I'm we'll, going. We'll be, we'll be dropping dropping Black Marlin every episode. We'll have to write up a, a little commercial for, for Black Marlin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, once you got Black Marlin, once you have be, things figured so out. So Black we'll, Marlin will be really cool, too, because it's not just like, Wob, we've done all craft beer, but, but for those of you who really are into uh, – just the, the craft drinking scene, the rebirth of classic cocktails, some of that kind of stuff. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be more spirits focused. It's gonna be a craft cocktail. Uh, it's gonna be on the lower end of like a craft cocktail bar. It's not gonna be like pretentious and stuck up and we're making every single you know ingredient fresh and in house every single day. But we're gonna be putting out good quality cocktails. You know. The, the classics sure. also with a spin we're going to be making our own twist on it you are going to be getting fresh fruit in your drinks you're going to be getting you know your your orange zested on top and every i mean it's going to be a, a cocktail bar there's going to be uh 12 craft taps all all craft beer mm -hmm. um there is going to be craft bottles available as well and then it's going to be uh a lot of uh appetizer small plate tapas focus um really cool little tavern spot in downtown stewart super awesome bar I, i've uh been lucky enough to know the owner my whole life uh mm -hmm. i actually worked for him in high school he's a buddy of my dad's and um it's kind of how i ended up in the job and to begin with is because i was telling my dad about all the ideas that he should tell his friend to do in this <laughs> place and it ended up working out where uh his friend called me and was like hey i like your ideas <laughs> you, you want to come you down and do them work? so uh, uh okay <laughs> but um that's what it's 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 gonna be it's uh it's gonna be we'll call it um Approachable trendy is what I'm going sure, for. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to be pretentious. I don't want to be on the high end of anything. I don't want to be, you have to know craft cocktails to come in. But if you appreciate drinks, you're going to appreciate what like we put show. out. It's kind of like this show here. I, that's why I love the show, man. <laughs> we're approachable. We're pro you got to be approachable. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing. The place has been there for 23 years going. Uh, I'm hoping to give it another 23 years. So Awesome. So, yeah, J Jeff's took on this job. It's been it's been hard to keep it a secret for the last month. 
uh, we wanted to tell you guys, and it took a lot of thought. I honestly, I'll be honest, I actually thought about stopping the show because I didn't want to have to start over again with somebody else. And then someone said, no, nah, dude, just, just adapt. It's all about, you know, you got to adapt to survive. And you put so much work into this show just to stop because someone's moving is, is not is not in your style. So it, uh, when you told me you were, you were talking about stopping the show, I was, I was upset and I was like, (laughs) I, I know I could figure out a way to be on it. And originally my thought was I could probably record a segment or something from South Florida and maybe you don't have the interaction with me, but we could do something where it's like, Hey, Mm -hmm. Jeff's news from, from the beer world down in South Florida. And then I do like a little segment or something. Um, I just thought about every opportunity that we could keep it going because I know you've worked so hard on this and and I've said it before. I don't know if I've actually ever said it on the show, but we've talked about it. How yeah. when this show started, I was like, eh, I don't know if I really want to do this or not. Um, and I knew that the minute I you, you were like, yeah, oh, you, okay. you I mean, came I'm in be kind of busy, man. So you I came in <laughs> repeatedly and kept asking me and I was like, it sounds like it's cool and all. I just don't know if I'll have time and I work a lot and this and that. And um i've told you man i i really (laughs) love doing the show now i i enjoy every second of it it's um it's so much fun and it's the opportunities it's presented the people i've met the the network that we've that we've created in such a short amount of time yeah it's humbling um super super awesome and and it only is going to get bigger and better from here so when you said you were thinking about not doing it anymore and i know you've gone through what two other hosts before me yeah um and over like I started this podcast, I started in 2010. And I'm I'm gonna say I'm probably I started you know, stop, the worst started, one. Stop, started stop. I'm probably the worst co-host that yet, but it's that's not what I hear. <laughs> not what I hear at all. But um, I want to uh, you know, I wanted to continue it, and I want to keep doing it, and I have fun with it, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy me being on it, and and I didn't want to go down a road where we had to find you another host, and yeah, and there's been plenty of people who've been on the show who probably could do it, but okay, cough, cough. Alki. No, we, we, yeah, yeah. With that said, I even talked to Alki after the homebrew fest. Uh, Alki's, he's on Rebel's episode. If you guys wanted to go back and listen to that one, um, I think he's a good fit. And I even to- told him, I was like, yeah, if, you know, Jeff was leaving and, and I had to find another host that, you know, it, I probably would have texted you and called you and say if you wanted to do it. But Alki also has a, you know, he works for Bell's. He, he is all over the place in Central Florida doing stuff for that. So it's hard to get a commitment, you know, a day and a week or a time and a day every single week to pump these out, which it's is funny what you had, I, well, I, I you had, had. I had to, uh, and actually, I mean, you noticed it as we got more and more into the show, how little I was doing on Thursdays when you came in. And it's because I did, <laughs> I joke. like, I like purposely cause I knew we were doing it on every Thursday and I needed to commit to that day and that time. Sure. I made it so that I could get all my work done on Thursdays super early. And then when I did, and then I'm waiting for you to come in, you come upstairs and I'm like on my phone, just like hanging out. And you're like, Oh, <laughs> oh, oh we're working crush. hard, oh, man. Jeff working hard, and I'm huh? like, I was just waiting for you, man. I'm ready to, I'm ready to roll, you know? So, uh, but yeah, it was, it's hard to commit. And you know, that is part of the reason we made Wob uh, home to the show is cause that, I was always there. That, that is the reason. <laughs> That's the reason. Because you were like, I don't know, man, like, I work a lot. I'm like, oh, I get it. I get it. Well, I mean, I can work my schedule around yours. So, all right, well, how about I just bring all my equipment at WAB as long as that's okay with you because you're, you know, the boss here, you know. If that's okay with you, like, yeah, okay, well, we'll we'll see, you know. Let's see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I was like, and I left, like, he's not fucking interested. Like, And I'm so glad that I <laughs> actually, because, like, there was a part of me that was, like, interested in it. Um you know how much I love to talk. I was like, we all know. I was like, this is, this is something I could do. Um, and then there was like this other, like this thing in my head that was just sitting there like screaming at me, like you already work like 60 hours a week. What are you doing? Stop. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like thinking to myself, do I, you know, do I want to take on this commitment? And then I have an event on like a Saturday and yeah. I work like six straight days of like yeah. 12, 13 hour days. And I'm doing a podcast somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this could be like a huge, a huge thing to take on. And, it ended up being super easy to take on, really, realistically, and I've enjoyed every second of it. And, Good. Um, and I'm glad we get to keep doing it. Yeah, so yeah. it would be cool, though, if we could get, like, a, a second local co-host for you up here. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Down the road. Even, we, not, we, even, even, not even full-time. Just every now we'll and see. then. We still have to figure out what the hell we're going to do with the show. <laughs> it's not just, you know, day. We have to find another day or we can stay with the same day. I don't know. I mean, it all depends on how your schedule I'm always off Sundays. That's true. I am not off. I'm always on. 
working on Sundays. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to cover kind of the last month for us in the first half of the show here. Um, that week was crazy. That was awesome. From, from Fort Lauderdale the whole weekend down there. God. And then seven days later, that homebrew fest. After the break, I'll tell you a story about day one. And we'll go into – that'll be part two. You we'll sure? Talk no, about let's, do it, let's do it now. We're, yeah. we're, we're recapping. Go ahead and tell it. Uh, so or is this your is this the funky Buddha before we start? Recording? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is just this is just to give you an idea of when you're listening to the for the lottery rail episode, <laughs> you're going to know exactly where where I was at that point. Um, we got to we got to funky Buddha right on time, right on so time. Happy. We didn't have we barely made it on time. It was a long drive down and we I know estimated it perfectly. And we, we ended up right on time. And and um, John, uh, John was running a little bit behind schedule. So we started to. Uh, have some drinks at the bar. We got there right as they opened. Like I think it was yeah. what they opened five at eleven thirty, and we got there eleven thirty five. Yeah, we got like five minutes. We're like the not even the first people no, in there, like, which is amazing. Yeah, we're like the thirtieth like people in there. Yeah, there was like at least ten <laughs> other people in there. Yeah. And uh, we sat down at the bar, and I just kept asking all the bartenders. There's like four bartenders on. And I asked all four of them. I got my first beer, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna try this imperial uh, vanilla cream vanilla ale. Cream. And you know, I got it. it was amazing. It was like eight percent alcohol, and I'm like, all right. No, no, it was imperial. It was a lot higher. That was eleven percent. Was it really? Yeah. I don't think so. It was. I thought I progressively got more. No. Okay. You, you started with like eleven, and then I dropped down to eight. I think your second beer was was. Oh lower. no no! I started with no crust. My first beer was my beer. My first beer was no crust. Me too. And then Darren started with lemon meringue. Darren got lemon meringue. Okay. But anyway, um, you got progressively higher. Either way, <laughs> I, I got progressively higher in ABV. But you started at eight. I, so I kept asking the bartenders, and, and the first one goes, "You got to get the love below." And I look at it, and it's twelve percent alcohol, and I'm like, "I got a podcast to do. It's eleven thirty in the morning. I don't think I should be drinking it's twelve. Noon. Yeah, it's I'm like, I don't think I should be drinking twelve twelve percent beers. Day, so I'm yeah. gonna get the no crust, and I got the no crust. It's good. We, you know, we're just put that one down real quick. It went down surprisingly easily, and I yeah. was like, "This is not gonna be a good day already because I know I'm gonna drink too many beers." <laughs> so getting, getting that itch, <laughs> we get that. So, you know, I asked this in the next bartender like what's your favorite beer They're like you got to get the love below and i'm like still can't do it yet still 12 <laughs> percent. Uh, i still don't think i'm ready for too it soon. so uh, that's when i got the uh the vanilla in imp- vanilla imp- cream, cream ale. Ale. and then Fantastic. um so good so freaking unbelievably good um so then that was 11 percent. that one was getting up there and then i asked the next and then, bartender and, and, and no, he goes I go, love below this is, this is when i turn to you i go you better start fucking behaving because <laughs> we still have a whole podcast and then another one at another brewery and you turn to look at me you're like mike i told you i was getting fucked, I'm up, today. fucked up bro. <laughs> <laughs> i was like i, I turn around like, oh god all right and then uh so then i get a you're third not driving, beer. I'm driving. i asked the third bartender what's your favorite beer and he goes love below and i'm like son of a bitch i can't get this beer right now so i had what was the fucking one i had i had another beer and I got it, and it wasn't Love Below, but it was another. It was another something. Oh fuck yeah! Um, it was something great. Uh, I get, remember. Did you get the Wide Awake? Wide Awake. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, and they had all their beers left over from their what three year three anniversary? Year three year anniversary. Was the that was, prior. and it was rained out a little right bit, so they, they had, had a lot of, of beer left over, and it was all us, right? like crazy good stuff. Yeah. So I get the Wide Awake, and then I'm like, fourth bartender, I'm like, last guy, somebody John's give still me. Not here. Some, I'm like, somebody <laughs> give me a different beer, please. I'm like, what's your favorite beer? The guy goes, Love Below, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm getting it. <laughs> Four different people have told me I have to get the Love Below. Yeah. The Love Below might be the best. Funky Buddha beer I've ever had. I love statement. it. I love statement. that beer. Loved it so much. It was amazing. Um, I gave French Toast a higher score because I was drunk when I had it. <laughs> but it, French Toast is also up there at 4.7. B- both of them probably 4.7 or 5 on Untapped. They're amazing. I, I would give them both fives but, personally. Uh, the Love Below was the – when I tasted it, I was like, this is the best beer I've ever had from Funky Buddha. And not only that, Funky Buddha puts out some really obscure stuff. Sure. Like yeah. they put out like, you know, like Lemon we talked meringue. culinary inspired food flavored beers that you wouldn't expect mm-hmm. so for them to put out a beer that has actual like like measurable recognize like recognizable ingredients ingredients yeah. and, and, and just it wasn't culinary expired it wasn't off the wall it was like a barrel aged imperial stout that was aged in two different kinds of barrels and then blended and with cherry and I'm like Ex- that it was all beer, execution. That beer was, could go yeah. toe to toe with anything from the brewery, from Three Floyds, from Wicked Weed, from yeah. any. That beer could go toe to toe with anything yeah. and still hold its own. And that beer could have its own fucking festival day, <laughs> it, it, like easily. <laughs> and people would come from all over the place to get it. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this beer is amazing. 
it's twelve percent alcohol and it's my fourth one in an hour. Yeah. So we started the show, <laughs> and I'm and drinking. The, and it. then no, and then they we get a a, a purse a private Two flights a private oh, brewery yep. tour, which was awesome. They showed us a little extra. We saw the barreling system, which was awesome. Oh. I, I got I got Mike got a boner. I got a, a super boner because they had Buffalo Trace barrels, and I love bu- Buffalo Trace whiskey. And then we actually then John met us at towards the end of of the of the tour, and then we sat down and drank two flights, essentially two flights worth and, of beer and French toast and uh, the three year anniversary IPA yep, yep. and the um, we had the course the hop simulator uh, hop, simula- hop yeah. simulator we had the so we had all that. And then we go and we are like going out to Lauderdale and I'm like, I'm fucking drunk. Like I'm hammered. Go to Lauderdale. I'm like, I'm going to get the lightest beer possible. So I get like this 2% Saison or 2.5% Saison or something. It was probably like 4%, but I keep saying it's lower. <laughs> and I'm like, this will be my only beer. Except that we get flights and then we get two flights and then we get three flights. We're doing the show and there's like flights everywhere and yeah. we're trying all their beers. We I'm literally like, had every single beer. I'm on like, tap. oh my God, I'm an extra. And then we got off the show and at this point I'm like, no more shows today. I can continue drinking. So I got like two more beers because we were hung out there for like four hours. Dude, we were there for a long time, yeah. And uh, we get back to the hotel and I'm like, I'm passing out. And they're this like, no. Now, this is now 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, we got to go out. We got to go to Riverside Market. And I'm like, all right. No, no, you were not. I was like laying in bed, face down. I'm like, fuck you guys. I'm going. I'm going to bed. Like, no, we're for so huge hotel. I like get up. (laughs) It was like cartoony. I like was like all ready to sleep, and then I just like shot out of bed. I was like, fine, I'll go. And I just like got up and walked out the door. Be old dad. (laughs) (laughs) And so we we go, and the first thing that happens, I get there, I get like some light ass fucking beer, (laughs) like something the lightest thing you could possibly drink, and I take like three sips, and I just walk out, and then it's pouring rain. I walk out in the parking lot, and the covered patio is packed full of people. <laughs> they all know when they see some guy walking into the rain, into the dark, what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I go in the side parking lot, and I just start puking everywhere. And I'm like, God damn it. This is the day that I wanted to have, right? Get inside. Pizza comes. And I ask the waitress if she'd married me. <laughs> She's like, oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, my God, this pizza looks so good. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, will you marry me? She's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just like walks away. Yeah. Like, all right, well, I need to eat some pizza. So we ate pizza, got an Uber home, and that was that was day one. I was, bla- was day I one. was like pretty close to blacked out near, near the end of that. We got back to the hotel at Lauderdale at episode. Midnight. That Lauderdale episode, I maybe you. could have blacked out at the end of that. Yeah. I definitely got like trashed afterwards. Yeah. I mean, because we went to Funky Blue. We stayed there till like 3 o'clock, 3.30, checked in the hotel. You know, a bunch of one minute, like we yeah, were in and out, in and out. Um, and then we drove to, you know, goddamn the airport. Essentially, I thought we were getting on a plane. We got through Laurel, and you know, I have I have a, a thing of I don't like drinking before the show with beers I haven't had. Yeah, in which Laurel was everyone, I'm which like. was essentially I didn't drink at all at Laurel. So because I wanted my reactions to be more genuine when I had the mic on. So Jeff gets his beer and is drinking, and Darren was drinking too, and then. Uh, I think I ended up like getting drunkenly a, playing I think I with got that a dog flight before the show. <laughs> yeah, we all well we, we I all think we all shared a flight. Yeah, we got like well no we had two flights for f- four of us to share. Yes, that's for, that was for the the, the uh, actual or no episode. two two flights for had, four of us to we share. Had, right, each had a flight before we even were, 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 were recording, and then he, uh, uh, John took us around the the, the, the brewery. Um, all all like twenty steps of it. it. Like that was a disaster. Like literally from eleven thirty five till. 11:30 p.m. We had essentially beer in our aggressive hand at all. drinking. I guess yeah, and Jeff got Jeff went crazy. And then the next then the day, next I was like, was thought rough. I was gonna die, but then like I got to bang and banjo, and I was I got a beer, and I'm like, this is, this is good. I'm good. I'm okay. We went to <laughs> we went to Big Bear down there, which is pretty popular. And oh, like, none of us got beer at breakfast slash lunch. No, yeah, <laughs> I I thought about. I was like, nah, I can't. I'm driving back today, and essentially, uh, there, I mean, there was four of us Saturday, and half of you guys were in bad shape. You and Dave, Red Dave. Yeah. Dave wasn't feeling good for he some He wasn't feeling yeah, good at all. He must have drank something at Funky Boot or something, but he just wasn't feeling it. And then you got fucking. I was still feeling it. I just was puking. You were just drunk as fuck. <laughs> I was just realized then, at that point. I don't know if how bad Darren was, but essentially we got to Big Bear. It was just like brunch, man. Just everyone God, party too Big hard. Big Bear, Saturday. that food, that was, was big solid. plates of yeah. good food, man. Yeah, and then banging banjo, like everyone's sluggish and. 
I was getting a little worried because I've never been a, here. That one took a minute to get going. I don't going. know anybody. And, yeah. like, the first couple of minutes of the show, like, I was, I felt like no one was talking. And then we all kind of fell back all, into yeah. character. And then Due South happened. And then there's that. Brian. Brian brings the best Can out Can I of just us. say before we take a break, Due South tap list was just as good, if not better, than Funky Buddha's. It was phenomenal. A lot of good beer. Like, beers that you can't get. I like that, like, like their Mariana Trench uh, rum barrel age was, like, not ob- obscenely expensive. And, like, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it wasn't Funky Buddha pricing where they, I mean, they release eight. every bottle for, like, $7. But the, Mar- the rum barrel at Mariana, I think it was 18 And then their one IT key was 10 which is it's in line. Yeah. I mean, it's not overpriced. Well, I mean, I got, I got, like, the Father's Day special. It was, like, two. <laughs> it was, like, a glass. Two and pine glasses. A bomber, yeah, two pint glasses. A bomber bag, carry on, carry yeah, bag. Yeah, two four bombers. Two of the tiki's. You got two tiki's and, and a, and a barrel. yeah, and a bag to carry it all in for yeah. twenty bucks. It's a good deal. I'm like, all right, I'll take that all day. Yeah. So. So we're gonna take a quick break. We're at the forty-one minute mark. We'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll be then right we'll back. get into a red cypress with Carl. <laughs> 